Yeah, we on, we on Great. Uh, thank you all. I'm Liam. Uh, today I want to talk about fast implementation of sustainable technologies by open licensing of intellectual properties. Uh, regarding open licensing, I, I think the most well-known uh, licensing way is Creative Commons by license and uh, BSD. Uh, this is to grant the users to, to the free use of the license work, including redistribution and uh, even modification. And in order to tackle the climate crisis, uh, we all want to speed up the implementation of the green technologies and even spread the knowledge to regions or communities which are less resourceful or economically less competitively. Um, but we, we are, of course, on the other hand, we highly appreciate the efforts of the researchers, their achievements and their efforts, and we are not encouraging freeloaders. So uh, today I want to propose a model for research and uh, even business model to spread the results of res research while not discouraging innovation. I, you can consider research as a, a roof and there are six foundational pillars. The first two pillars are literature review and uh, hypothesis formulation. And uh, this, these two are familiar to researchers who are, who are writing a thesis, but they are not specific to writing a thesis. In the realm of pattern, you have to also study the literature, you have to review the literature, you have to formulate the hypothesis in order to draft a pattern map or to know better about the prior arts. And the middle two pillars uh, here, one is modeling, simulation, and analysis. The other one is experiments. These two pillars are, are the main dish in today's discussion. And uh, the other pillar, optimization, you can consider it as a iterative process among modeling, simulation, analysis, and experiments. And uh, optimization is very specific to, specific to individual research because uh, you may borrow someone else's modeling, simulation, or experiment to build up your own research, but optimization is very uh, specific to your own research. That is, that is what optimization is. And interpretation and discussion is the way you present and uh, dis uh, the way you present your research results to the public. So you can build your own research based on other simulation and experiments, uh, avoiding duplicate efforts and reducing repetitive investments. This is uh, an experimental force data of a restrained ROV, uh, which is remotely operated vehicle. Uh, this open data is released by uh, Edinburgh University in the website called Data Share. And you can see from the photo there is an ROV attached to a frame via eight tethers. And the frame is to simulate a boat. If you want the ROV to freely explore the environment, of course you don't want, want it to, to, be, to be restrained by a boat, but sometimes you, you, need to, you need it to perform a specific task. And you need stable transmission of power and data that, that is when uh, an ROV has to be restrained by a boat. 
And the aim of this experiment is to quantify hydrodynamic forces acting on a restrained remotely operated vehicle. Under the following situations, uh, one situation is uh, this water tank will produce regular and uh, irregular waves. And the other situation is when the ROV's propellers were activated at different rotation speeds. So that is the aim of the experiment. And the application is for the underwater vehicle design and control. Uh, the experiment is to use the collected data set as benchmark to test the performance of the ROV, validate numerical investigation. And uh, you use this experimental force data, you can also develop and refine algorithms for position control. You, you know that in order to control the position and orientation of the uh, ROV, you can consider this force data as your foundation to build your own research. So if you are the, no matter you are, you are the publisher or you are the user, uh, what is the consideration of experiment open data? Uh, there are the following items uh, you, can, you should consider. There are data type, data structure, and metadata is the description of data. This includes additional information about the data itself, such as when and how it was collected, who collected it, the equipment or methods used, units of measure, etc. Metadata is crucial for interpreting the data correctly and ensuring its valid use. Uh, there are also file format, data quality, licensing and usage rights, and interoperability. Interoperability is the ability of the data to be used in different systems, platforms, and software. Uh, of course, in this case, there is a, a licensing agreement to it. Uh, it is the typical Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International Public License. And uh, the rights and condition are very familiar to, to us. And in some of the cases, there will be optional restrictions, like a uh, licensor might choose to apply to the licensed material, such as the non-commercial and non-derivatives restrictions. But these two restrictions are not applied in this case. Okay, uh, in, in order to proceed with my discussion, there are some engineering disciplines in my focus. Uh, there are green chemistry, green chemical process, material, environment engineering, and energy uh, system. And we can try to map them with SDG, SDGs. Um, Let's take environmental engineering, for example. This field primarily supports SDGs related to environmental protection and sustainability. For instance, it contributes to SDG 6, clean water and sanitation, through developing water treatment system. And SDG 11, sustainable cities and communities, through sustainable urban planning. And SDG 13, climate action, by designing climate resilient infrastructure. And you can apply this uh, mapping methodologies to other disciplines. Each of these disciplines intersects with other SDGs as well, given the interconnected nature of sustain sustainable development. Also, many of the new innovative solutions to global challenges will require the integrated efforts of all these disciplines. Apart from the experiment, open data, uh, now we come to the point, modeling, simulation, and analysis. Um, first, let me uh, explain what, it, what modeling is. 
Modeling is the process of creating a mathematical representation of a system, such as a chemical reactor or an energy grid, based on physical laws, experimental data, and logical assumptions. Uh, in the realm of green chemical engineering, models can be used to understand the behavior of complex systems and to predict their responses to various inputs. And what is simulation? Simulation, once a model is created, it can be used to simulate the system's behavior under various conditions. This involves numerically solving the model's equations to predict how the system will respond to different inputs over time. MATLAB is a widely used tool for such simulations, providing various built-in functions and toolboxes for these purposes. And modeling is indeed a process of transforming a real-world system into a mathematical representation. This model will typically contain variables and equations that capture the essential characteristics and behavior of the system, whether it be physical, chemical, biological, or something else. And once the model is established, it can indeed be viewed as a mathematical problem from the perspective of simulation. The simulation will use the numerical methods to solve the equations that describe the model producing a prediction of the system's behavior over time or under various conditions. However, it's important to remember that while the simulation is a mathematical exercise, the model it is based on is a simplification of the real world. The model's accuracy will depend on how well its assumptions and simplifications match the real system. So even though the simulation is based on mathematics, interpreting the results and relating them back to the real world requires understanding of the original system. And now I want to uh, introduce some very commonly seen computeri computerization tools for modeling, simulation, and analysis. Uh, first is MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB and its companion tool, Simulink, provides a rich, well-documented, and widely used platform for simulation and model-based design. They are known for their use, ease of use, visualization capabilities, and extensive library of pre-built blo blocks and toolboxes, which can make it easier to set up and run complex simulations and also interpret the results. And uh, another, another important tool is uh, Python. I, be I believe most of you have heard, heard of that, but what, what its role in simulation and modeling. MATLAB and Python, both powerful computational tools, have their own unique strengths, which make them individually suitable for various tasks in chemical engineering and energy research. However, it's their combination that can truly enhance the efficiency and the scope of these research areas. MATLAB has been the standard in the engineering and applied sciences communities for years due to its powerful toolboxes and simplified coding language. On the other hand, Python is a general, general purpose language that has been gaining popularity in scientific computing due to its readability, flexibility, and a vast array of scientific libraries available, such as NumPy, SciPy, and Pandas. Moreover, Python excels in data analysis and visualization with libraries like Matplotlib and Seaborn. Importantly, Python's strong capabilities in machine learning and AI with libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch provide a great advantage in predictive modeling and optimization tasks. So these two languages can work together in several ways. For instance, you can call MATLAB function from Python using the MATLAB engine API for Python, thereby accessing MATLAB's specialized toolboxes while retaining Python's advantages. Similarly, you can use MATLAB's Python command interface 
to call Python functions directly from MATLAB. So uh, in a typical workflow, one might use Python for data collection, pre-processing, and exploratory analysis due to its powerful libraries and ease of handling large data sets. Then they might switch to MATLAB for the modeling and simulation stage, utilizing its advanced toolboxes and Simulink. Finally, they might go back to Python for further analysis, visualization of results or machine learning tasks. And finally, there are two uh, computational tools I want to make examples of. Uh, there are Cantera and Pyomo. Uh, in recent years, there has, has been some an increase in Python-based simulation tools for chemical engineering and energy research, such as Cantera and Pyomo. Cantera is particularly good at modeling for chemical engineering and thermodynamics. Pyomo is a powerful optimization tool. These tools offer functionalities similar to those found in MATLAB and can interact with other Python libraries allowing for integrated workflows within Python. Um, besides modeling, simulation, and analysis, there are also uh, topics about data analysis and algorithm development. Uh, data analysis refers to inspecting, cleaning, transforming, and modeling data with the goal of discovering useful information drawing conclusions and supporting decision making. It's a crucial step in interpreting the results of simulations or optimizing parameters in a model. MATLAB with its extensive suite of statistical and analytical tools is often used for this purpose. And algorithm development. Algorithms are step-by-step -step procedures for calculation. Algorithm development involves creating new methods or improving existing ones to perform a specific task more efficiently or effectively. In the context of green chemical engineering and energy, this might involve developing new algorithms for more accurate modeling of chemical reactions or for faster solutions to optimization problems. MATLAB is a preferred tool for many researchers for developing, testing, and implementing such algorithms. Uh, there is some more about the interrelationship between data analysis and algorithm development. First, you can consider the results of the data analysis are the inputs for algorithm development. For example, uh, studying the data from a chemical reaction might lead to the development of a new algorithm that more accurately predict reaction rates under different conditions. And after the algorithm is developed, you can gain more insight on the data. So this is also an iterative process between data analysis and algorithm development. And the goal of the algorithm is to, to improve uh, the understanding of model and also for a faster solution to optimization. For example, interpret sensor data from a chemical process, identify patterns that correspond to inefficient operation or waste production, and suggest adjustments to improve efficiency. And finally, we come to optimization. Optim optimization, this process involves finding the best solution from all feasible solutions, where best is defined according to some criterion. This criterion could be, could be to minimize energy consumption or waste generation in a chemical process. For example, Pyomo is particularly used for such optimization problems, providing a powerful and flexible platform to model and solve a wide range of optimization problems. So optimization is the iterative process between modeling and simulation. And, the, and 
when this iterative process is finished, and which means that we get the best performance against objective functions. For example, uh, when the efficiency is maximized or the waste being minimized. So Pyomo is a powerful optimization tool, but it is not a standalone solution for every step in the modeling, simulation, data analysis, and algorithm development processes. However, Pyomo not, is not typically used for tasks such as simulating physical systems or detailed data analysis. For instance, you, you would typically model a physical system using another tool such as Cantera for chemical reactions or MATLAB, Simulink for control systems. And then you could use Pyomo to solve optimization problems based on that model. Similarly, while Pyomo can help generate valuable data through the optimization process, detailed data analysis might require additional tools or libraries such as Pandas or Matplotlib in Python. In conclusion, while Pyomo is a valuable tool in the toolbox of an engineer, it is typically used in conjunction with other tools and libraries that are more suited to the specific tasks of modeling, simulation, data analysis, and algorithm development. So now I want to talk about the, a better code writing way for open licensing opportunities. Uh, first of all, uh, use Python as the main script language while calling MATLAB functions via, via the MATLAB engine API. It's better than you write your main script language in MATLAB and calling the Python libraries. And number two, um, you can use some uh, Python-based open source tool for system modeling such as Cantera. Um, so, the, but below is the detailed methodologies of doing that. Modeling stage with Cantera. You will first define your model using Cantera within a Python environment. For example, you could define a chemical reaction mechanism or a combustion process. Specify the reactants, products, and relevant conditions. And secondly, exporting to a compatible format. After you've defined your model, you can use Cantera's various output functions to export the model parameters to a format that can be understood by MATLAB. This could be as simple as writing the data to a CSV file or a more complex serialized format. And the uh, simulation stage with MATLAB API in MATLAB or Python script calling MATLAB via the MATLAB engine API for Python, you can import the model parameters. Once you've imported these parameters into the MATLAB environment, you can use them within MATLAB's powerful suite of numerical simulation tools to simulate the behavior of the system. And number three, use MATLAB engine API for calling functions from those distinguished toolboxes that other open source tools lack. This API calls on MATLAB libraries, which are proprietary and need a valid MATLAB license to access. And the code is still human readable, and the functions being used, as well as the logic of the script, can be understood. You can use good documentation kept in code to gain an understanding of what each function is doing and compare this to the functionality offered by other tools. The MATLAB functions may be utilizing features or characteristics not present in the replacements function, or they might be integrated in a way that makes swapping them out non-trivial. And number four is modularize your code. The reasons of doing that uh, including first code maintain maintainability, 
The first advantage of modular programming is that it increases code maintainability. When you divide your code into modules, you can update or fix errors in one module without disturbing the others, making it, making it easier to manage and update. And there are also code reusability and reduced redundancy, collaboration, open licensing opportunities. And regarding um, my suggestion of the writing way, a better writing way of code, you, uh, first regarding Cantera module, this module could be responsible for defining and exporting chemical models. And you can plan Python preprocessing module. This module would handle reading and data from the Cantera output and preprocessing it for MATLAB. And you can plan MATLAB simulation module. This module would run the simulations based on the preprocessed data. The code in this module will need to be protected if you don't want to share your MATLAB scripts. And there is PyOMO optimization module. This module could define and solve optimization problems based on the simulation results. And there is analysis and post-processing module. This module could handle analysis of the simulation and optimization results, generating plots, computing statistics, etc. And number five is well maintain a good documentation in your code for future possible improvement and replacement. Um, due to the time limit, I probably cannot go through this one by one. There is example script. You can test your code with example script and testing a test suite to ensure the validity of the code after uh, every time after modification. There are input val validation tests, validate whether the script correctly handles invalid, out of range or unexpected input values, such as head temperature, pressure, and concentration of reactants. Finally, you can use MATLAB file exchange platform under a BSD license to share, distribute, and review code if calling MATLAB functions is unavoidable. Okay, tiered pricing scheme for patent utilizing open licensed work. Uh, tiered li pricing scheme proposed in an open license which grants a patent to free use of open license technologies in the beginning, but request different level of financial feedback when different level of commercial profits have been realized. For example, up to 100,000 in revenue from the licensed technology, no fee, and from 100,000 to 1,000,000 in revenue, 5% of revenues. And beyond that, we, uh, the licensor might request 10% of the revenues. Okay, so uh, due to the time limit, I have to stop here. And maybe we can discuss after this uh, meeting or afterward. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, first of all, I, I don't have the broad uh, industrial or knowledge background for all industries. So, um, but I think I if one industry uh, is very stringent on the disclosure or dissemination of knowledge, it might have its own reasons. Uh, I think to change the culture 
of that industry is very is very difficult. Yeah, but I I can uh, I can advise you about some uh, repositories worldwide, which host the open data, open research data in the world, and uh, uh, so you can get access to more industri industry knowledge through, through my sharing. Yeah. Yeah. objective function 如果跟實驗發現有差距的話我用更廣的角度來看
就在这个位，然后，然后这个 ROD 的这个，能就是 K KD 有没有打开，就不同的 case。你说 ROV 这个例子吗？它没有 chemistry。嗯，我讲的应该是应该是 objective function， 就是目目标。Cantera， 嗯。呃、哦，它它就是用来模 model 这个。化学或者是热力学的一些模型。Objective function 是事先要自己定义的。你的目标是什么呢？定出来。嗯。嗯。化化化学，化化反应动力学也是。对，但是但是这种学科的是人是人为把它定出来的。那对他来讲就是一个一个物物理或者是化学模型。有学这一个，那你一次定太多的目标，就会就会很，就会你就不容易决定说你的 optimization 什么时候是做到好这样子，因为它会有很多冲突的冲突的条件。因为最终他们就是处理的时候是数据，对，但但数学处理好，就像我刚刚讲的，不代表你物理有处理好，除非你的 modeling 做的很接近真实，但很接近真实，因为又有一些成本或者是时间的问题，有时候你也做不到，你必须难免要做简化跟假设。做的是人文人文学科，嗯、呃，是标注吗？嗯、呃，嗯、呃，嗯、呃，嗯，文字数学。这确实是很复杂的东西。嗯。嗯。对。嗯。嗯。是是，就是定太多会会冲突啊，会彼此会冲突，就很难找到最佳解。四点后会是 for prime station， 就是呃呃赞助商的大会议，是是是，今天主场，谢谢您。